important attribute of the Z transform is this aspect called the region of convergence, or which we'll abbreviate ROC. Now the ROC is the set of all values of Z for which the Z transform of a signal X of N converges. If we look at the definition of the Z transform, we have that X of Z is a sum from N equals minus infinity to infinity of X of N Z to the minus N. And this is an infinite series, and the question is, when does this series converge? And it might converge for certain values of z and not for other values of z. So if we think about in the z-plane, we're going to have some parts of the z-plane where it exists and other parts of the z-plane where the z-transform is not defined. So for certain values of z, it will be defined, others it won't be defined. We're going to consider actually a series of examples. The first one is where we have a delay. In other words, w of n, say, is delta of n minus n naught. So it's a delayed impulse it occurs at location n naught. Of course, n naught could be negative or positive. We substitute w n into the definition of the z transform to find w of z, and all we have is this impulse that occurs at time n naught at zero everywhere else. So we pick out that particular index of z at n naught, and we get z to the minus n naught. If n naught's greater than zero, clearly this can't work for z equals zero because then I have one over z, and I'm dividing by zero. So z transforms not defined when z is equal to zero if n naught is positive. On the other hand, if so n naught is negative, then the exponent here is positive. We have z raised to some power, and the problem is if z goes to infinity, the z transform becomes undefined. So we have our first z transform pair from this example, and it says that delta of n minus n naught has z transform z the minus n naught, and the region of convergence are all values of z such that z is not equal to zero when n naught is positive, or if n naught is negative, we have to exclude z equals infinity. For a second example, we're going to look at a causal exponential signal. So this signal, x of n, is defined as alpha raised to the nth power times u of n. So it exists for positive values of n, it's zero for negative values of n, and depending on the value of alpha, we could get several different cases, which I've sketched here. If alpha is positive, but less than one, then alpha to the n decays, we have a decaying sequence. On the other hand, if alpha is greater than 1, alpha to the n grows, so we have an increasing sequence. And if alpha is negative, but between minus 1 and 0, then we have an alternating sign, but a decaying sequence. And if alpha is more negative than minus 1, we have something that grows, but alternates. Now recall, for the discrete time Fourier transform, the only cases we could do would be this particular case here, where it's a decaying exponential. We could do that one, and we could do the decaying alternating sign exponential. The discrete time Fourier transform didn't exist for these growing exponential sequences. And that's one of the advantages of the Z-transform is that it can be applied to signals for which the discrete time Fourier transform doesn't exist. But we'll substitute into the definition and write x of z as a sum from n equals 0 to infinity of alpha to the n times z to the minus n. We can group the terms that are raised to the nth power and have alpha z inverse to the nth power from n equals 0 to infinity. And this is just a geometric series, and we know the answer to such a sum. It's 1 over 1 minus the quantity we're raising to the power. And that is true provided that the magnitude of this quantity we're raising to a power is less than 1. If the magnitude is greater than 1, then this series does not converge. So our condition for convergence is that we can only apply this to values of z whose magnitude are greater than the magnitude of alpha. So this gives us our second z transform pair in that alpha to the n times u of n has z transform 1 over 1 minus alpha z inverse, or if we do a little bit of algebra, we can write that as z over z minus alpha, 
and this applies provided the magnitude of z is greater than the magnitude of alpha. So we can sketch our region of convergence in the z-plane, as I've shown here, where if we have a circle with radius alpha, the z-transform exists for values of z that are outside of alpha. That's the only parts of the z-plane that this z-transform is defined because the infinite series does not converge for any values of z that are interior to the circle of radius alpha. So for a third case, we're going to consider an anti-causal exponential signal. And in this case, the signal starts at minus 1 and goes to negative time. So values at n equals 0 and positive n are 0. We can write that as minus alpha raised to the n u of minus n minus 1. And this minus n minus 1 is just what allows us to define the signal to be going from minus 1 onward. We'll substitute y of n into the definition of the z transform to find y of z. And we have the sum from n equals minus infinity to minus 1 of negative alpha to the nth power times z to the minus n. So we'll pull the minus sign because it's not inside of the power. Where we're not raising the minus sign of the power. It's just out front. We're going to pull that out of the sum, put that here, and then we'll group again the terms being raised to the nth power. We can write this as alpha inverse times z raised to the minus n power. Well, I'll do a change of my index of summation. Instead of summing from n equals minus infinity to minus 1, I'll let l be equal to minus n, and we'll substitute that into the sum. And now we have the sum from l equals 1 to infinity of alpha inverse z quantity to the lth power, with, again, the minus sign on front. Well, this looks like a geometric series. It's just our formula for the geometric series starts at 0, not at 1. So we're going to add a term to 0 to the geometric series and then subtract off the L equals 0 term over here. So the L equals 0 term is 1. And since there's a minus sign in front of the sum, we end up adding 1. In this form, we can use the formula for the geometric series to write this as, and we get the minus sign from out front, and then we have 1 over 1 minus the quantity raised to the power, which in this case is alpha inverse z. And then we'll have our plus 1 term. And this sum, sum from L equals 0 to infinity, has this closed form expression provided that the magnitude of the quantity being raised to the power is less than 1. In other words, the magnitude of alpha inverse z is less than 1. If that's not true, then this sum does not exist, and we can't find the z transform. But we can do a little bit of algebra on here and show that this becomes alpha over z minus alpha plus 1, which when I combine terms over a common denominator, I get z over z minus alpha. And in this case, I could also write that as 1 over 1 minus alpha z inverse. It's more convenient to express it in powers of z inverse. Now the region of convergence then becomes the magnitude of z less than the magnitude of alpha. If that's true, then alpha inverse z will be less than 1. So now we have our third z transform pair, negative alpha raised to the nth power u of negative n minus 1 it has z transform 1 over 1 minus alpha z inverse or z over z minus alpha. And the region of convergence is magnitude of z less than the magnitude of alpha. And in this case, so we can sketch our region of convergence. It's inside of a circle with radius alpha. If you remember, the previous example that we did for this z transform here is identical to x of z which we had in case 2. The only difference is the region of convergence. When we had case 2, the causal exponential, the region of convergence was outside of a circle of radius alpha. With the anti-causal exponential, the region of convergence is inside of a circle with radius alpha. So the z transforms themselves are non-unique, unless we have the region of convergence information. We need the region of convergence to uniquely correspond the z transform with the time signal. Now, if we look at the definition of the z transform, it's this infinite sum in z to the minus n. So this is a power series in z. And for that to converge, the terms in the sum must be absolutely summable. In other words, for convergence required that 
the sum from n equals minus infinity to infinity, absolute value of this quantity be finite. And that implies that the absolute value of x of n times the absolute value of z raised to the minus n is finite. And from that expression, we can see that the nature of the region of convergence is that it depends on the magnitude of z. And so if you think about what does the magnitude of z represent, it represents a circle or rings in the z-plane. If the magnitude of z is a constant, then we end up with a circle or a ring in the z-plane. We'll do another example here where I've combined two terms. I've got an exponential sequence. This is a causal exponential, alpha, like alpha to the n u of n that we did in case two. And then the other term I've got here is a anti-causal exponential because we've got one half to the n, but this exists for u of minus n minus one. It's easy to see that the z-transform is linear. I've got a sum of two signals here, and the z-transform, therefore, is going to be the sum of the z-transforms of the individual signals. So we first are going to recognize, using our formula for case two, the causal exponential, that one quarter to the n u of n has z-transform z over z minus one-fourth. And the region of convergence for that is the values of z whose magnitude exceed one-fourth. Now the second term, negative one-half to the n, u minus n minus one, has z transform z over z minus one-half. And in that case, the region of convergence are values of z such that their magnitude is less than one-half. So when we find the z transform of the sum, it's going to be the sum of these two z transforms, and we'll have to combine the regions of convergence, and it turns out that both of these terms in the sum must be defined for us to add them. So the values of z for which the sum is defined is when z is greater than one quarter but less than one half. So g of z takes this form, the sum and the region of convergence now becomes a ring. It's a ring between a circle of radius one quarter and a circle of radius one half. And you can combine these two terms by putting them over a common denominator as I've done here as well. But the region of convergence is now a ring. Well, the final example that we're going to look at in this lecture is to consider a z-transform for a signal which is u of n plus the quantity negative three-fourths raised to the n times u of minus n. This first term would correspond to the causal exponential with alpha equal one. So then I get u of n. This next term is not quite in a form that we've seen before. It has an aspect of it that's associated with an anti-causal exponential. So we're going to rewrite this a little bit. Our formula for the non-causal or anti-causal exponential involved u of negative n minus one. This one here includes n equals zero. So we'll break that factor out. I can write this as u of n plus delta of n. And I'll do instead of plus, I'm going to do minus minus because my anti-causal exponential had a minus sign in front of it. We'll have negative three-fourths quantity to the n, u of negative n minus one. We can look at the z-transforms of each of the terms here, and u of n then is going to go to z over z minus one, and that's going to be for values of z that exceed one in magnitude. Delta of n converges to one, that's for all z. And then the term minus the quantity minus three-fourths to the n, u of negative n minus one, has z-transform z divided by z plus three-fourths. And this z-transform holds provided the magnitude of z is less than three-fourths. So we run into a problem when we try to put these three together because the region of convergence for the first term, magnitude of z greater than one, is incompatible with the region of convergence for the third term, which requires magnitude of z to be less than three-quarters. So in this case, there are no values of z for which the z-transform can be defined because the infinite sum just does not exist. So this is an example where there's no z-transform for this particular signal. So the region of convergence plays an important role when we're looking at inverting z-transforms and also understanding things like causality and stability as we'll look at in future lectures.